Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and today I'm sharing an idea for determining location with Lynn Ormond. Now this is a little different from the other videos I've already made on finding lost objects. This is a spread based on finding the best location for something, such as where can I find a man? Um, where might I find my next great job? Uh, where would be a good place to move to? Um, or where is the best location for my next vacation, that kind of thing. Now, whenever I lay a location GT of this type, I use the nine by four format that you see here, rather than the eight by four plus four that you normally see me use. Um, and I do this on purpose because this, well, first of all, this looks more like a map, but mainly it's to get me out of the method of distance mindset and into the house mindset, okay? And this is a house-based method that I am showing you here. So I am not asking for a story. I am only using the cards as location descriptors and directions for the seeker, all right? Keep following along. This will all make sense in a moment. So the object is to focus on where the card representing the object you're looking for falls, you'll take note of the house the card falls in, as well as the surrounding houses and their visiting cards, okay? You're going to interpret the houses and the cards visiting them as locations and explanations as what to do with that location. Okay, you'll then use the houses and cards touching the seeker as directions and actions for the seeker to take. Okay, so notice that what falls around the seeker are not locations. The locations are determined by the card you choose to represent what you're looking for. The cards and houses where the seeker falls are directions for the seeker. Okay, now, once you find the object card and the seeker's card, you can then turn the other cards over to avoid distraction. So that's what I did here for you. Okay, now keep in mind that you're looking for correlations among the cards, all right? So for example, if you have two cards falling around the object card, the object is what you're looking for. Here, we're looking for a man, okay? And say you had two cards that referenced a hot climate or a sunny climate, right? And then you only had one card that referenced a cold climate. Well, then hot would win, okay? You know what I'm saying? So you're looking for correlations. In, in that case, you would then take the, um, the, the single card that, that referenced cold and you would use another um, descriptor for that. Okay, now you can also use this idea and the keywords from the list that I have in my book that I'm gonna show you in a second um, and lay small spreads, right? Anything from a line of three to a, to a nine card box, you can, you can do the same thing with. And I'm linking my missing object playlist in the description box below this video. And there's box spread in video in there. So um, for those of you who are still uh, <laughs> GT phobic, you know, even now we're turning the cards over, but still, you know, some of you still just do not want to touch a grand tableau. Ooh. Um, you know, if you're not, if you're not here yet, then you, sure, you can just play around with this with three cards. All right. Now, speaking of the, um, the missing object keyword list, um, it is in my book, right? My book, um, in the hard copy, it's, I think, 343, some missing object keywords, right? So I have that list in there and what I have already done because I don't know about you, but I'm constantly adding more keywords to my lists and uh, my, my book is full of uh, writing. <laughs> it's already a mess. But um, I am including my updated list in uh, my, on my blog, 
is it on a blog or in a blog? Well, whatever it is, but it's going to be <laughs> on, in, on my blog, um, which is always linked in the description box. And it's going to be in my new Facebook group, which I am also linking in the description box. Yes, I just started last night, just started a Facebook group called Lisa Loves Lenormand, um, just to make it easy for people to find, um, even though I really don't want it to only be about Lenormand. <laughs> but, you know, we're just going to see where it goes. All right, but I will put it there also. Okay, so what, do you, what are your instructions here? Clear your space, clear your mind, get your cards ready, and then select a card to represent that which you are seeking. As I said in this um, example, we're looking for a man, okay? So if you were looking for um, a vacation location, vacation location? <laughs> vacation location yeah you could choose um, ship right to represent vacation if you're looking for um, a description of a location for a new home you could use the house or the stork right uh, if you're looking for where might you find uh, a new job you can use your work card all right or you can just always use that key card to represent any anything you're looking for okay now let's look at this example in this spread we have a young woman who is looking for a man. So the man represents that which we seek. And then of course the lady is the seeker. So as you can see, he lands in the garden and it just so happens that the garden fell in his uh, house. And this, um, you know, whenever I lay house spreads, this seems to happen for me a lot. And it, it could be because the, um, the cards know that this makes sense to me and it's something that I can use and, you know, uh, the, the cards fall according to how you use them, right? All right, so he lands in garden and garden lands in his house. This is significant to me, so I take it as double confirmation that the man can be found in a suburban setting, maybe in the park, yes, but garden is like your local surroundings, your neighborhood, so he's, he's going to be found basically where you live, where she lives, right? Now the rider is indicating where to go here, right? And it's in Scythe, it's in the house of Scythe, which is my card, Scythe uh, for me represents the West, but it also represents farmlands. So I would say to the seeker, is there a park or garden setting west of you and near farmland, okay? Now the coffin falls in tower, which is telling me no to urban settings, right? Because the tower represents urban settings, places where there's tall buildings. The coffin there is saying, no, he's not there, all right? So we then have the house of whip here, right? Whip is a place where you exercise. It's a crowded place, okay? Again, these are all in the, in the uh, list, the keyword list, all right? The Waze falls here. So the Waze tells me it's within driving distance. It's along a path, or it could be where you go to make decisions, right? If you, some, some people have a park where they go and they sit someplace to, to think when they need to make a, a decision, right? Um, so the ways falling in the whip can say that you should walk a path that's well-traveled and where people run or near exercise equipment, right? All those, uh, a lot of our parks here have um, exercise equipment built right into the park. All right, now the birds, we've got the house of birds here and the bouquet lands there. So the bouquet, is uh, you know fits in with the garden setting right places where there's flowers and the house of birds suggests that you might stop to smell the flowers and focus on the simple joys in life as you stroll through the park chatting with the birds or or whistling or singing um that may be how you're intended to uh meet him okay bouquet is my card for spring so I'm thinking maybe this is going to take place in the early spring when the birds are just returning and nesting and active, okay? Now the heart 
lands in the house of mountain. I think she's going to find love in the mountains in, in like a rocky location or a higher elevation. Mountain is also a cold card, okay? Notice that's why I said early spring because I was already looking at this, all right? When it's still cool, all right? So now clouds lands in the house of lady, right? Remember, she's the one looking for him. He's right above her head. Um, and, and this makes me think that he's, he's right under her nose. He's above her head under her nose, <laughs> but she's not seeing him. Okay. She may be visualizing him in the wrong way, which is why she can't recognize him, you know, which is a good point because we tend to look at those who appear similar to the last one that we had a relationship with, right? Like whoever we just had a relationship with, when we're looking for a new relationship, we tend to look for somebody who looks just like that person, even though there's a reason why we're not with that person anymore. So maybe we should look for somebody who's different. Anyway, um, you know, we're, we are typically attracted to a certain type, but is it really what you're attracted to or just what you are accustomed to? Hmm, something to think about. Now there's a question for the cards right there. Okay, so um, the sun in Lily. Lily is a cold card too, just as Mountain is, right? So here we have these two cold houses, but now the sun falls in this cold house. So she might meet him on a cold day when the sun is shining, right? Which will burn through her clouds and help her to see him. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Now let's look at the Seekers card. I use her location to describe her actions and explain how she can best find him, right? So I set an intention not to use her position and to, uh, to determine location, right? But for instructions, right? So in other words, I, I know I just said this, that I'm using the cards and the houses where he falls to determine location because he's what we're looking for, right? So these are all location, right? She already knows where she is. So these are not referencing location. These are referencing her um, directions, her instructions, what she should do to find him, okay? All right, so she falls in the house of snake. She's taking a convoluted path toward finding him. She's deceiving herself. That means she's not in the right place to find him. She's also touching the snake in the house of clouds and clouds falls in her house, right? So the snake can also represent rivers, right? But if it was going to appear to tell me to look by a river, it wouldn't fall near her, it would fall near him because this is where the location cards are, right? You gotta get your head straight on that, otherwise you're gonna be so confused, right? So remember, these are directions and instructions for her. These are locations where you can find him. I mean, this is where he is. This is showing where he is, all right? So she needs to, twi you know, to twist a, a different way in order to see him because, because he's hidden from her right now or she's hidden from him. Either way, they're hidden from each other, right? So the house of coffin here, just like I had the coffin next to him and that told me, don't look here. Well, for her, this is another don't. Coffin is a stop card, right? It's, it's saying don't. So maybe she's been looking at the dog park. He's not there. Right? Or it could be saying to stop, um, stop staying and remaining loyal to where you've been looking or the way you've been thinking, right? Okay, so now the house of stars right under her shows, the house of stars shows how her search is, uh, is progressing, has been progressing. And the mountain says she's delayed in finding him. She, or you could say she's her own worst enemy. She's been looking in the wrong places. Right? Now the house of bear tells her where her control lies. Right? That's, that's your strength and your power and your control. Right? The, the bear. And we have the child here. So 
Her control lies in looking in new locations or at new times or with new eyes, right? Now the house of stork tells me what she should change. She needs to go further. The ship falls there. She needs to go further away from where she's been looking. She should try looking in foreign locations, which just means different locations, different parts of the community, other parks within the community, right? Um, other rural settings near farmlands, okay? All right, so hopefully that all made sense to you. Um, this is really fun if you just want to play around with it. So just, you know, choose something that doesn't matter a whole lot to you. Like, yeah, okay, where, um, where can I go on vacation next year? Something like that. Um, and just lay it out and, and see, you know, use that keyword list and, and see what comes up. Just have fun with it. The more fun you have with these spreads, the more sense they will make to you and um, the, the more information you'll get out of them. Okay, so that's it for today, friends. Don't forget to like and share this video and join my new Facebook group, Lisa Loves Lynn Ormond. Thanks for watching. Now go play with your cards. Bye, everybody.